Great. All right. Good evening. Uh, I'm happy to say that we have all made it here through the snow, and we have missed three meetings in a row. Um, that was our cushion. So, so I'm hoping uh, we have no more inclement weather, um, but we'll deal with it as as we as we face it. Anyway. Um, let me just briefly describe the schedule for the rest of this month. Uh, it keeps shifting around on me. Uh, but we have, um, tonight we have all the budgets uh, that the town administrators and the town accountant are responsible for. Um, Monday, uh, tomorrow night, we will have consolidated facilities and the planning board, and then we'll review some of the non-budgetary articles with our planning director, Bill Clark. Um, on Monday the 9th, we'll have Council on Aging and the library, and <clears throat> hope that they can make it. I understand more snow is predicted for Sunday and Monday. Um, and the Council on Aging has been postponed three times, I think, now. At any rate, uh, that's, that'll be Monday. Wednesday, we'll have the cemetery and the fire department. Um, the following week, we will have um, nothing on Monday. That's a holiday. We'll have the DPW on Wednesday the 18th and the police department on the 19th. And I believe we'll also have Thursday the 12th, we'll be meeting with the schools. Okay. Thursday, February 12th? Thursday, February 12th. So we have a, a, a busy schedule. Um, pretty much Monday the 23rd. I hope there won't be any budgets uh, that we haven't discussed, and we may be able to put some finishing touches on uh, our budget presentation to the town, which will happen on Wednesday, February 25th at 6.30 at the Milton High School gym. So we have a lot of ground to cover. And I don't know, any questions on, on uh, the schedule for the moment? I, I've left out retirement. I'm hoping to get Kevin Cleary in either on the 18th or 19th, right at the beginning. Um, Blue Hills will probably come in in March sometime because they don't have, they only have a very preliminary uh, number for us uh, at the moment. Um, and I don't think I've left anybody out, but correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so um, that's where we stand at the moment. And if there are no questions, then I'd love to invite uh, uh, Anne-Marie Fagan, Amy Dexter, and Michael Blanchard to the table, and we'll begin with, uh, we'll go through the 11 budgets they represent, and we'll do it alphabetically, and we'll start with the central business office. But first, Anne-Marie will tell us about a reorganization plan that uh, uh, was, was pretty much implemented by now, I think, uh, and it affected the central business office and the treasurer's office and the DPW and the selectman's office. So if you'd like to tell us all about that, it could, and, and, we'll, and we'll revisit the effects on each budget as, as we look them. Thanks. Well, thank you for having us. Um, we're, we're happy to be here and to explain our budgets to all of you. I did send to Darnell um, a copy of a letter that was sent to the Board of Selectmen and the Personnel Board, which outlined the reasons behind this reorganization plan um, that we implemented back in December. Um, what we tried to do is we tried to realign duties and tasks and put them into departments, which to us made sense um, for what th that department's mission uh, was. And it did, as Ted say, said, it involved the Selectman's Office, Consolidated uh, co uh, Central Business Office, the DPW, and the uh, Treasurer's Office. 
what we tried to do was we tried to combine all the water and sewer functions under one umbrella under the DPW. Um, so we took an employee that was in the central business office as a senior admin clerk for water and sewer and we moved that employee. He, she didn't change her location, she just changed who she reported to and she now reports to the DPW director. We improved customer service by streamlining where you have to, when residents have to come to town hall and where they have to pay their bills. Um, prior to this reorganization, bills were paid up in the central business office, so um, trash tickets were purchased up there, water and sewer bills and parking tickets, um, recycling bins, compost bins. So what we did was we felt that all of those purchases should be really under the umbrella of collections under the treasurer's office. So we moved those duties, the parking clerk duties, the um, purchase of stickers, trash bins, and recycling bins to the treasurer's office. Um, we addressed some of the financial management recommendations in the DOR report by creating a financial analyst position in the central business office. And we improved the what I, this is near and dear to my heart is improved the HR department and the HR functions and put it, we're trying to put everything under one umbrella under our assistant town administrator and we took the health insurance benefit piece that was um, being handled by the assistant town treasurer, we transferred all those duties up and under the assistant town administrator. So what we did was we eliminated a senior admin clerk in the central business office and we transferred a senior admin clerk for water and sewer from the central business office to the DPW office. And we created, um, as I had said earlier, a financial analyst position. We also, because we moved a lot of the duties to the treasurer's office that require a lot of customer service and a lot of interaction with the public, um, we increased a principal clerk in that department to a level four senior admin clerk. And we, um, the, and I can just outline what the reorganization resulted in with respect to alignment of duties. Again, as I had said earlier, the parking clerk responsibilities are now transferred and they're now handled by the treasurer's office. The trash sticker, recycling, compost bins, again, are now handled by the treasurer's office. Work and compensation audit is transferred to, from the town accountant to the assistant town treasurer's position. Unemployment responsibilities are transferred from the assistant town accountant position to the assistant town treasurer's position. Payroll backup and support is transferred from the assistant town accountant position to the assistant town treasurer's position. Processing of licensing permits under the jurisdiction of the Board of Selectmen and coordination of utility company conduits and poll petitions are transferred from the executive secretary in the Selectman's Office to a newly created position in the Selectman's Office of uh, licensing um, and benefit assistance um, to the assistant town administrator. Any questions? Okay, I've got Steve and then Darnell and I'm, I'll jump in at some point. Go ahead, okay. Steve. Just a quick one. What percentage of bills are paid in person at Town Hall these days with uh, mailing uh, available and the online option available? Uh, I don't have that on hand, but I can get that for you. Uh, parking tickets, we still get a lot of um, foot traffic for parking ticket uh, payments, uh, trash stickers. Still, a lot of people come to the counter requesting uh, to purchase those. So, but I can um, find out from Amy. You can from run Jim. a report, Jim. From the well, town prior. Treasure. Well, prior. Well, you mean years. bills overall, correct? Not just those the, that were transferred down. The, the assertion was made that you're improving customer service for the people that pay bills in person, and I'm mm -hmm. just trying to see how big of a segment of the population of the town that is at this time given that there's other options to taking time off and, and going to town hall? Um, it's much larger than you think. You, I think a, Jim would be able to answer it more because keep in mind that a lot of the online payments are for current bills only, not past due bills. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so, and we have a lot of residents that like to come in, some of the elderly. Um, people like to come in and buy trash stickers at Town Hall rather than go to one of the local merchants that sell them. Um, and the parking tickets, there's a lot of foot traffic because, as Amy said, those are just current bills. And a lot of people get notices and when they go to renew their license or their registration um, that they have outstanding parking tickets, which are from prior years. And they have to come in and pay those in person. And they have to pay those with cash. And so what I mean by streamlining the process is when people would come to the central business office, they would have to pay with cash. No department other than the treasurer's office can take in cash. So would have, that person would have to then go down to the treasurer's office, give them the cash, they would get a voucher, go back up to the central business office, hand the voucher over, and then complete their transaction. So we felt that this was a much um, more efficient way for someone to come to town hall and to do their business in one one office. Right. And I, I get that. And if it's you know hundreds or thousands of transactions, that's you know a, a, something that's more noteworthy than if it's just a you know, dozen or so. It's yeah, more I know than a I, dozen a day. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I don't think we've ever taken a, a poll or a, 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 I don't know how we'd quantify that, but there is a lot of foot foot traffic on a daily basis to that office. Um, do we increase the total number of personnel in that office with this reorganization? Do we add a body into that office? Uh, sure which office? To the um, Treasury office? No, we did not. We did not? No. Yeah, cause I was wondering if with the added duties, did we uh, give them additional coverage? Well, no, because question. we took duties away from the assistant town okay. treasurer and brought them upstairs to the selectman's office. So that's why we gave them okay. some other Little duties. Violence. Okay. But no additional bodies. Okay, so uh, when I was looking at this, it makes a lot of you know sense to rationalize you know where where different tasks are being performed. I think that's great. Um, I did notice that we have one transfer and then three sort of personnel moves that replace a new position with an old position. You know. Uh, for an old position. One of them uh, in the central business office, there's a jump in two levels. In the um, treasurer's office, there's a jump of one level. And in the selectman's office, there's a jump of three levels in terms of uh, the, the um, SPEA levels of uh, uh, compensation and description. Mm -hmm. So all in all, we were, we're sort of upgrading the capability here, and I, I understand that m the one position in the CBO's office was fairly essential um, <coughs> for giving Amy some support, that, some real anal analytic support. Um, I'm curious about the, the jump in the treasurer's office, why that was necessary, and I'm curious about the three-level jump in the selectman's office. Um, I guess uh, a, a contract and licensing agent merits uh, three levels higher, but um, I'm just wondering what that individual is going to be doing that, that either wasn't getting done before or was getting done somewhere else or they're addressing a need that, anyway, that's, that's, mm -hmm. that's my question. No, that's a good question. The um, one step up in the treasurer's office was that the duties that that person was now going to be performing fell in line with all other level four positions in the classification plan. Um, the selectman's office, the new um, contract and licensing agent and benefit assistant position, um, this was the result of some of the goals and objectives that the Board of Selectmen had asked me to implement. And um, a couple of those were to we in the selectman's office have contracts, easements, um, leases in a drawer, um, but they're not cataloged and no one really looks at them to make sure that they're in compliance um, when, when they do to expire. Um, if there's um, payment schedules um, with those contracts, we don't really have anybody that's really monitoring that. So this licensing um, agent and benefit assistant will create 
a matrix of all of the contracts, easements, deeds, um, leases in the selectman's office and, and create a matrix of, of each contract, um, what the purpose for the contract is, if there's monetary payments, when those are due, um, when the expiration, um, so on and so forth. And then that person will have to monitor those contracts to make sure that we are, that they're being followed in, in, in compliance with what the intent of the contract lease easement is. Um, so oh, that we like payment performance too, so that's great. <laughs> right. Um. Um, we don't want to um, find out that there's um, a contract that um, we're supposed to get paid something for them and we're not from years before. And, and the problem is the turnover um, in the selectman's office, um, some of these contracts um, go uh, many years back. Uh, leases uh, go many years back and easements, um, takings. So we wanted to bring that um, system up and have it, like I say, put into a, 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 a matrix and to have someone really follow it for compliance purposes. Um, the other important task that this person will be performing is I think um, <coughs> this is one of Tom Hurley's uh, pet projects is uh, with liquor licenses. Um, each liquor license has different requirements um, and regulations that they're supposed to be adhering to. We don't have the staff currently in the selectman's office to make sure that those compliances and those um, requirements are being adhered to. So this licensing agent will also put together a matrix in order to follow each store's um, liquor license requirements. Um, this person will also, because Michael is going to be taking over the health insurance piece, which is um, every year it seems to get become more and more cumbersome, um, I will lose some of his assistant with contract negotiations and putting together scenarios for me when I'm in um, handling uh, negotiations. This position will be, will be doing that, will be creating scenarios for me on spreadsheets um, so that I can, as I'm negotiating, know what <coughs> percentage different um, scenarios are going to cost the town. Um, this person will put together um, a program to, uh, for outreach for boards and committees. Um, you, you, we have a great number of residents in this town that give an inordinate amount of time, like yourselves, on volunteer boards. Um, but we need to reach out, because I think we're tapping into the, the same people all the time, because I think that there's not enough, not, uh, there's not enough notoriety out there um, re about these boards and committees and to new people that come into the town, about uh, the different organizations and boards and committees that they can volunteer for. This person will be instrumental in putting together a, a program to send out for outreach to town residents on boards and committees and, and policies and procedures um, with respect to um, how we handle boards and committees. So those are some of the duties. This person will um, also take over some of the um, duties that were, um, were currently being done by the executive secretary th for the Board of Selectmen. Um, as we ha the Selectmen have more and more issues facing them and they have to have more and more meetings, the executive secretary's time is really devoted to putting together the agenda, building the agenda, getting all the paperwork together, attending the meeting, doing the meeting notes, breaking down the meeting, sending out the correspondence, and then getting ready to set up another meeting. So some of the duties in her job description we also transferred into this job description, and that is the conduit um, notifications for the utility companies, um, the licensing for the taxis, the entertainment licenses, like I said earlier, the liquor licenses, um, she'll be handling processing all these. She or he will be handling processing all these. Um, mm -hmm. Again, the, the developing the database and the, and the matrix for um, all of the contracts in our department. And, um, and also, this position will, again, people, I think, don't understand that. I only really get Michael, the assistant town ad administrator, 18 hours a week. He, he's really a shared position with the personnel board. Um, so with us bringing up the health insurance to his position, we understood that he was going to need some support um, 
on open enrollment, on sending out notices. So this position will also be um, a support for the assistant town administrator with respect to health benefits. Great. So those are some of the some of the duties. I've got Steve and Darnell and me. There you go, Steve. Thank you. So there are a lot of moving pieces here. So yes. when they all settle in, is this an expanded budget overall, or is it a com condensed one? Are we saving money, or is this costing us more money? Actually, it's actually, I, I, in my department, we're saving money. Um, I think in the Treasurer's Office Department, for the um, immediate future, you'll be saving money because the person that retired was at a higher step person that took um, that position comes in at a lower step so you'll have some savings there the um, executive secretary in my department is retiring in June her position is a level six position but it's been um, funded at a level seven because it used to um, it used to be handled that when she did the selectmen's meetings at night that was paid she was paid for those hours um, a few years ago, we, we renegotiated that, and her 37.5 hour a week includes night meetings. Um, but in order to not reduce her compensation, what we did was we took what she was making at that time for her 37.5 hour a week salary, plus what she was making for the nightly meetings, and we did an average, and we slotted her into a level seven position. So again, not for her not to lose compensation. Um, but with the understanding that once that woman retired, that position re would revert back to a level six position. So can you can you quantify that for us? And since we're in a two-year budgeting sort of scenario here, can you tell me what that means in next year's budget at the same time if we're doing all these changes? Like in fiscal 17's budget? Right. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, because you know the, some the newer positions will all jump up in cost versus what, especially since they're higher grade, they'll jump up more quickly. Mm -hmm. Right. Sure. Okay. Who am I? She's still answering. Okay. Okay. Um, my question is, we're talking about bringing people, and now the people that we have, I don't know if any of these people have been cited or we know who might be filling these positions, but are they? Are we looking at people coming in with experience to help and assist in the... Um, different um, contracting, helping with the different, are we going to bring, have people here and then, then try to train them up into the, um, I would say the voids in their knowledge and how we plan on getting them trained for where they have maybe some deficiencies at this point. Maybe they're strong in one area because we're, we're asking them to do a whole lot. Mm -hmm. I mean, you, I don't, that's a good, that's you know, good. we're asking like, people, these folks to come in and kind of be a jack of all trades and, you know, catch a lot of how are we getting them trained and what do we have planned out to get them trained and ready uh, for this position or do we know some folks out there that have all this training? We, we have already um, had some movement. These, uh, most of these positions, um, with the exception of the positions in my office, are clerical union positions. Mm -hmm. So um, we had to work within the um, constraints of the collective bargaining agreement, which is the positions had to be posted seven days internally. Um, the financial analyst position has been filled internally, um, and I'll let Amy speak to that um, position in a moment. Um, the person that was doing the level three work in the treasurer's office is the same person. She was just reclassified up to the level four. So there's, um, and, and the person that transferred from the central business office down to the treasurer's office through the attrition um, was the person that was handling parking tickets trash sticker sales and recycling bin, bin sales and composting bin sales. So she will be down in that office and now there'll be a lot of cross training going on in that office because she'll be in that office in order to not only do the work but then train the others that do the work. Um, in my office, um, the positions have not been filled yet but they have been advertised. We're currently um, calling the resumes now and we're starting the interview process for my two positions. Um, I'm happy to say that the person in my office that is retiring um, is going to be here through the rest of this fiscal year. So my hope is to get these two new positions filled um, by the middle of March and have the expertise of the current employee that does a lot of the, these 
the duties of the executive secretary position now here to help to um, train and mentor the employees. Um, with respect to the other position, the contract licensing position, some of the duties, as I said earlier, that I took from the um, executive session, executive secretary position and moved into that position. Again, that executive secretary that's currently in my office can train her on those things and the other pieces I will work to train that person on. Um, but I hope, to answer your question, I hope to have someone that's, um, that is skilled, that has a lot of knowledge of 30B, that is great computer skills, um, knowledge of uh, uh, Mass General Law Chapter 138, liquor licenses, um, so. Yeah, and like I said, sometimes they're not there, but we also, if they don't have it, we also want to work a plan on getting them trained mm -hmm. and budget that training because um, your time is very valuable to this town. Mm -hmm. and. Uh, Sometimes it's better to get them out, source the training, to go out and get it done. Um, it also makes a lot of, uh, I would say, uh, good networking ties when you go out and get trained, because then you can always call somebody up if you have questions. So it increases the span and scope of our reach mm -hmm. for the town. So training's not bad. <laughs> um, and having that, but I say also we want to do is make sure we budget that mm -hmm. um, somewhere to say, okay, we're bringing these new people and we're going to budget X amount of training to get them up and going um, in the first place because mm -hmm. I think we kind of fall back on that in a lot of our hiring and stuff when we look at it. It's not bad to send somebody out to get trained. No, absolutely. Absolutely not bad. We, we, we are very fortunate here, though, that when people do move within the union from position to position, that they, um, they take the time to go back to that former position and help to train that person that's slid in from another department. So people um, really work well together in the town hall and, and help one another. But you're absolutely correct. When, if we're bringing in new people from the outside, we do have to get those people up and trained. But as I said earlier, the executive secretary in my office is, um, she, she will be sorely missed when she leaves because she has a wealth of knowledge mm -hmm. and she will be a great uh, mentor to the two people that come into my office. Well, I know there are training budget line items in many of the different budgets, um, mm -hmm. so we can look at those when we get there. Yes. Uh, the, uh, do you have money in this current fiscal year's budget for an overlap of personnel for training purposes? In the Selectman's office, I do. do. Um, okay because I, um, the assistant town planner position wasn't filled right um, on July 1st, so I have some money left there to keep, like I said, to keep Paula Rizzi here through the end of the fiscal year. Plus, the person that will take her position is coming in at a lower step for fiscal year 15. But there's still the overlap, but it's basically um, uh, Trisha's position that is supplying in that addition. hasn't been filled that is supplying you with the wherewithal for an overlap I think it's it's all of those, all of those it's, it's the okay. senior admin clerk position it's the assistant town planner position that wasn't filled as of July 1st and it will be the change when um, all right. the level six comes in. <coughs> so it's so correct me if I'm wrong but the payroll functions in general are in the treasurer's office the, the payroll function is, you're correct, is in the treasurer's office with oversight in the central business office by the assistant town accountant. So now the rest of those payroll functions like uh, the workers' comp and, and unemployment, things that are related to payroll, payroll records are going down to the treasurer's office, which that's makes correct. a lot of sense. That's correct. Because um, that's where the information is. Right. So when we were doing that work we would just have to call down there get the information and then give it to the third party to do those those audits so it just made sense to move it down there okay so does that give everybody a good idea on mm -hmm. on that okay i want to i want to take two minutes and ask you about liquor licenses since we've brought that subject up several times and we do have a liquor license on our on our is one of the new articles um you mentioned that each one has a different level of specificity to yes, it. Yes. When does that? When is that determined? At the not at the not in the article I'm looking at for recommend that. No. Recommending. The what? article you're looking at is for the home rule petition. Right. Um, 
So when it's when it's when the applicant comes into the board of selectmen's meeting to apply for the actual liquor license. That's done at the local licensing level, which is your board of selectmen, and that is when those requirements are put into place. Wouldn't town meeting want to know what those requirements might be in terms of whether or not they want to vote for it? I mean, is it you know whether it's beer and wine or a full that kind of thing? If they're hours, it has it has never happened in the past. It's always been the the board of selectmen are your local licensing officials, so they're the ones that make the d determination. Okay. Well, then I guess they could speak to it at town meeting, too, if it came up. Absolutely. Or they could also come to the selectmen's meeting when it was on the agenda. Great. Okay. Uh, let's move on to the central business office. Thank you. Okay. And, and that's, uh, so we'll hear from Dexter, our town accountant. <coughs> and I'll also put it up so that there's... Okay. People have any questions? Um, what do you want me to just start by giving a brief overview, or? Well, I think you you, you can tell us a little bit about the the changes in your office and the changes in your responsibilities and Sorry. maybe how how this uh, uh, new financial an analyst will help you out. Okay. Um, and. You know, yeah, I understand that, that um, I don't know if everybody else read the Department of Revenue's recommendations for the financial structure of, well, for the personnel structure of our financial management team in, for the town, but, but they did recommend that, uh, um, that we beef it up, and this is an effort to do that, and we'll free Amy up to do to do more things other than day-to-day -day reconciliations. So. Right. so let me explain how my department's organized as it currently is now after the reorganization. So there's myself that's um, the town accountant. I'm responsible for all of the financial reporting of the town, which is a $100 million budget, which you all know. Um, I do all the financial reporting to the Department of Revenue. I work with the outside auditors. I reconcile. <coughs> all of the balance sheet accounts, several of the um, revenue expenditure accounts, plus that's general fund, plus all of the other special revenue funds, capital project funds, trust funds, all of those things falls under my responsibility. My assistant town accountant um, is responsible for doing vendor um, warrants, meaning the payments to vendors. Um, She's auditing the bills when they come in from the department. She's checking if they're contractual, that they're in agreement with the contract, that um, we have the proper Form 1099s for tax purposes. She's setting up new vendors. She's reviewing everything to make sure that something hasn't been signed off by a department head that the town cannot legally pay or we don't have um, the proper paperwork for, the proper backup. She's doing all of that so that when it comes to me and I'm reviewing it and I'm signing it off, she can answer all the questions I might have and I have a strong comfort level that, you know, what's there has been looked at twice. It's, it's been looked at her thoroughly and then it comes to me and I look at it again. It's, it's very important that that checks and balances happen. Um, she also does the same thing for payroll. So every um, department has an most departments have an admin assistant or an admin clerk that do that department's payroll. Um, some departments that might be only a couple people on what we call their pink sheets, which says Amy Dexter worked 37.5 hours at, you know, so much a week. End of story, she took, you know, eight hours vacation day, eight hours of vacation and whatnot. And they actually enter that into the system. And then they have to send the actual hard copy paperwork up to the town accountant's office and the assistant town account thoroughly audits that. She goes through to make sure that if somebody was out sick the day before a holiday that they're not getting paid for the holiday or whatever per the collective bargaining agreements, the, the rules or however you might want to state it are. She makes sure that if people are getting a stipend that it's within the contract and 
things like that. She maintains all the contracts in the system so that every year when the raises go through, she puts those in. Um, and then it goes down to the treasurer's office who actually processes the checks and takes it from there, does all the withholdings, sets up new employees. That check and balance is extremely important that she's looking at that. Um, that takes up most of her week, payroll and vendors. She does, you know, she does work on special projects for me. She's often answering department questions. Oh, they looked at their expenses. Something's coded wrong. She's making adjustments, things like that. But her week is pretty much very full. Um, plus, she assists at the counter when people come in if there's a line or there's somebody at lunch or whatnot. So she really didn't have any availability to take on some of my duties. So I'm doing all the day-to-day -day journal entries, account reconciliations, right through to all the financial reporting, working with department heads on their budgets, forecasting. Over, I've been here for four and a half years, and over that time, my role has expanded greatly um, with, yes, a lot of it based upon the Department of Revenue recommendations, but also, you know, as a, a new board of selectmen members come in, they have different ideas of what kind of reports they might see, how often, you know, they might want to see them, that kind of thing. So I've been tasked to do more and more financial analysis, more forecasting, um, more special projects that I found that I was getting very behind on my day-to-day -day stuff. Now, in an accounting world, the recommendation and, and how I would want it to work is you would reconcile all the balance sheet accounts every month. I wasn't doing that. I wasn't doing it on a timely basis, which is not a good system of check and balances. It was be starting to get weakened because of me being pulled <coughs> off on, I'm on several board, uh, several committees um, that take, you know, a lot of meetings and stuff. So anyways, I found this need where I didn't have anybody to offload that work to. Um, I had two senior <coughs> admin clerks that were mainly doing water and sewer, posting payments, selling trash stickers, selling recycle bins, a lot of that type of work. So when one of them left to go to work for the planning board, we didn't fill that with this reorganization and plan. And um, so we eliminated that position and that's why there was a need to focus and shift some of the duties down to the treasurer's office, recognizing that I'm going from two people handling the counter and water and sewer to one. So the financial analyst has been in place for three or four weeks now, I think, and she um, was an internal candidate. She's been doing a great job and she's really just taking on all that stuff, which is we're already up to date through December. Um, so we're in really good shape with the stuff I wanna see done every week. I need to get my office to where we're looking at things not reactively. Like I'm looking yeah. at things two months after the fact and saying, what happened? I need to get to a point where I'm not doing the day-to-day -day stuff so that I can do financial analysis that I can say, hey, something looks up with sticker sales. How come they're down? And that I can proactively ask those kind of questions to the department heads so that we're, we're looking at things and we're making good decisions and we're thinking things through instead of always being on the back end yeah, saying, yeah. what happened? Um, and that's really my vision for, for where my office needs to go. And it's only going to get busier and busier as the budget expands. I mean, $100 million, one person doing the financial reporting, it, it's a lot of work. And I'm not saying that to toot my own horn. I'm, I was honest and went to Anne Marie and said, I need help. I'm, the, sip, the ship is starting to tip. Yeah. and. Um, we started to put this reorg plan into place. So that's kind of where it is. I, I think it's where the office needs to be. I want to be clear that it addresses several of the Department of Revenue recommendations, but you know, I think we all are aware that there probably more than likely will still be a future need for a CFO, ATA of finance type position. So we had to also recognize that there was an immediate need that wasn't going to get any better and that type of position is probably a little ways down the road so i just want to make that clear that in no way were we saying we didn't need that position no, this is just the first step 
in a, yeah. in a much, much larger mm -hmm. picture <clears throat> that we hope to. Um, um, when, when I look to um, do reorganization changes in departments, I always try to do them through attrition or through vacancies. So I'm never displacing anybody. So this is this reorg is, is really the first step in what we hope to be a much larger plan as as we move forward. So, anyways, that's kind of where I was coming from with it. Um, I think we're in really, you know, starting just three to four weeks after she started. She's doing a, a, a great job. She's really getting, you know, picking things up and just able to work very independently. I spend an hour or two with her every day, and um, she just kind of rolls with it. So I think it's going to be, she's going to be a really, you know, valuable part of my team. Um, and then I do have a principal bookkeeper that she does um, a lot of account reconciliations for water and sewer funds and capital projects, um, the bonding related to um, water and sewer and DPW projects as well as Chapter 90. She keeps track of all of those expenditures and she's really a key person to the DPW director to help him manage his budget, which is, is really large. So she reports to me, but she does a lot for me as well as a lot for Joe Lynn. She's kind of a shared resource. She helps mm -hmm. Anne Marie out too. So they're all very key people um, doing a little bit you know, different. I think we have full complement now, and uh, by the end of the year, we'll be in really good shape to start fiscal 16 with really being on schedule completing these so that I can get to the Board of Selectmen and present a flash report on a timely basis and mm -hmm. not always be behind the eight ball. So um, when I did the, the level service budget for 16, it's about a four, $1,400 increase over the level dollar line 2-6 budget. Um, basically, I had step increases of about $8,700 um, for fiscal 16. We transferred 54000 in salary and wage to DPW. And then we transferred 13500 to the treasurer's office for the parking ticket processing company. And then I used some of the excess funds that I've turned back historically over the last couple of years to fill the gap in the salary between the level 6 and the level 4. Okay, so I put up your proof for level service yeah. on, on the screen, and and just so we we understand what's going on here, this contractual service here for nineteen thousand um, dollars is for the payment of the parking ticket processing company or collection company, and and. Depending on the volume of parking tickets, uh, the payments could be as high as 19000 or uh, in fiscal year 14, as low as $11,784 or whatever it was. Um, but it, it's, it, it varies. So, so this contractual service is, is being moved from the central business office to the treasurer's office because they're going to collect the parking tickets now and and that'll be easier for people coming in especially if they're paying with cash um, the amount that is being added to the treasurer's um, budget is 13,500 and the amount that's being um, credited to the CEO <coughs> is is essentially the 19,000 but but well I, the difference between the difference. So you're keeping five thousand five hundred, right? Basically, mm -hmm. um, so it's you know you could give all nineteen thousand to the treasurer, but you know it's, this is one of those things when you focus on a contract, you realize oh we've been overestimating this contract. Do we want to continue overestimating it? No, um, and and you know where. It's not really, I mean, to me, the 5,500 is not the issue. The issue is, is, is um, can you hire that 
fisc that financial analyst and, and pay them and, and put them on. The 5,500 difference helps to sort of achieve level dollars, but um, anyway, that's, that's the explanation of this, this chart. So for instance, when you also go to look at um, Schedule A, you'll see, see the contract line, 19,000, was 11,709 was the actual, and, and that did create most of the turn back that, that uh, uh, we got from the CBO last year. Um, anyway, did you have a question, Darnell? Uh, yes, children sure. collector's budget. Where is that reflected, the 13000 that look back on that budget? If we go back that. on that budget? Yeah, I'm okay. I see that reflected. I'm on his contract. Contract. I'm on his contract. I want to check where, where that's reflected. It's, un, it's under um, contractual, 135. It's included in the 127. Okay. Oh, let's see now. Not on the um, schedule A. That's what I'm saying. Look at the schedule. I think it's in the hundred twenty-six thousand. It's part of the hundred twenty-six thousand. It should be, anyways. No, I was looking at the wrong one. No, I was looking at the wrong budget. It's part of the eighty-three thousand three hundred and seventy. If you look at schedule E. Okay. Eighty-five three seventy. There it is. Yeah, this was added. Uh, the first. This reorganization happened in December, and the first budget we did get from the treasurer did not have this piece in it, so he gave us a revised budget, Darnell. Um, anyway, this is this was the revision. This thirteen thousand five hundred here. And also, I think his revision included that step level increase. Okay. Um, anyway, so this should be, this should have been listed further down in Schedule E under contractual services. Okay. Yeah, and then so it would have populated contract, yeah. Schedule A yeah, properly. Yeah, contract, but yeah, okay. Um, yeah, I see it so that's, that's why it didn't hit, hit that. Um, So good catch, Ted. I also yes. have in my notes that there was that we discovered an error on the professional services line between level service and level line. The eight thousand and the eleven thousand were supposed to were maybe transposed. That was the guess as to what the error was. Did that get resolved? I think it's still up there. This one here. Yeah, I wrote, I wrote on here okay. that the numbers were supposed to be reversed. Um, that has not been resolved. Okay. And, and thank you for reminding me. Sure. And, and was, I will make another note of it. Thanks. Okay, so are we finished with the treasurers for the yeah, moment yeah, since yeah. the treasurer is not here? Hi. Um, <laughs> no, 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 I was just kicking back. Uh, Amy, back to traffic tickets. Mm -hmm. Where does the revenue from traffic tickets go? Where does it go? Does it go through a department to the general? Depends who collects it. Um, hold on. You were asking me what. It goes to the general fund. Is that what you're asking me? Yeah, or are you fund. asking me what classification within my local receipts? No, no, I'm not getting that, that refined. But I'm, I'm wondering, what's the ratio of what we're paying for this outside service to do the tickets and what we collect each year? We're paying seven or $11,000 for processing yes. of these tickets. What are we collecting? Hold on a second. I, and I guess my point is, is there a way to, to structure this within a department so that you can do a revolving fund type thing that might help pay for that outside service to process them rather than 
have it in your budget. I don't know about the revolving fund, but I want to say I'm trying to find, I don't have, I didn't print out the descriptions, which was foolish, but um, <coughs> I want to say it, it's, isn't it somewhere around 60, 70 thousand? I mean, it more than pays for itself. 60 or 70? Yeah, yeah. I, I can get the exact number for okay. you, but it's significantly more than the fees, and we get a lot for that, 13.5. We get, um, when they can't collect it, they put a notice on the person's registration and license so that when they're up for renewal, they cannot renew until they come to town hall and pay. Um, so the collection rate is extremely high because of that, and they do all the, you know, they do all the collection, not all the collection, because some people still like to come in yeah. and do it, or they've lost their ticket, and we have to look it up. But um, could you give us like a, a five-year look at, at the revenue from traffic tickets, mm -hmm. so we could see what kind of enforcement sure. we're getting from that? And then we can bring it up uh, on December uh, on the nineteenth. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Amy, in terms of local revenue, um, this isn't exactly, this is straying a bit off the topic of your budget, but uh, one of the things that, that I discovered this year um, when we revamped our budget templates, and I want to thank you, it was a magnificent job of, of, of changing the templates around so that we could really see the history of each um, department's expenses. Anyway, the one thing we're not getting um, this year is is the revenue that different departments might bring in um, and and I've been thinking about that I mean in the past uh, many of the departments had no clue about the revenue they might be bringing in or or couldn't estimate it properly uh, and it fell to you anyway and then we would look at it and but we look at cate we, we look at aggregations of things like um, fees mm -hmm. and fees come from a number of different operating departments and I'm just you know I, I just wanted to bring this up but at some point maybe we could have a breakdown of what is the police department bringing in what is the inspectional services bringing in mm -hmm. what is the planning department bringing in um, what as, as, as revenue lines that match up to the aggregation of fees, permits, licenses that mm -hmm. that come from a variety of departments, because it's hard to it's, it's just hard to reconcile those two different descriptions. So, so what I brought with me tonight that's I didn't print the column that has the mm -hmm. line item description, um, which ties to this revenue analysis that I shared with you earlier in the budget process. This, if I Reprint this, resort it, and subtotal it by department. That will give you it, and it will show you what line items. It will show you the parking tickets. It will show you the trash stickers sold by the library versus the trash stickers sold upstairs. Um, it will tell you how much the town clerk took in for birth certificates. I mean, it's our vital statistics. It, it will get you to that level, and I did it for That's the last huge. It's back to 2007. Hmm. So I have. You know, eight years of history here, and I have fiscal year 15, six months to date. I worked on this today, and I rushed when I printed it. The way I have it sorted now, it ties to this revenue analysis that I gave you. So I'll, I'll save it and resort it a different way so that you have it both ways, so that That'd you can great. see and what's you send in these it to line me, items. I can, I can circulate it. Okay, and, I'll work on that tomorrow. That would be great because we have some budgets coming up. Okay. For whom that would be really instructive. And a couple of those people have come to me and asked me for the information <laughs> and preparation. <laughs> <of that. laughs> Very nice. Very nice. Um, okay. Uh, Steve. I have a few questions, actually. Um, Mrs. Fagan, are you, uh, you had earlier um, said that this reorganization was the first step in a bigger plan. Mm -hmm. And I'm wondering what that bigger plan is going to be necessarily and what's going to cost and if this initial step puts us irreversibly on the pathway to that. It's a plan that um, 
I, I'm not ready to share yet because I haven't even shared it with my board of selectmen. But again, as I spoke earlier, it's it's the beginning stages of what I'd like to see change um, within town hall. Um, what I mean by that is I, I would like to see um, one section of town hall um, become the true financial area for town hall, and I would like to have under that umbrella, I would like to have the town accountant, the treasurer's office, the assessor's office, um, all in the same location, maybe like the back section of, of the um, second floor of town hall, so that, that they can um, share resources, share staff, um, whereby trying to, again, um, consolidate and um, restructure departments. Um, but again, as I had said earlier, th those are things I like to do when, um, when through attrition and um, through vacancies. So um, there are changes that I'd like like to make. Um, I hope to get them done in, within my my tenure here. But um, I'm not ready to roll out the full plan just yet. Okay. Um, just, but as Amy is, had, it can be good, and change can be just for change's sake. So, mm -hmm. with with respect to what we're doing, the things I would be interested in knowing is what efficiencies do we get right. from that, or what coverages do we get that we don't have. What I try to do is I always try to change um, when I'm doing a reorganization plan. I always try to um, to make it so that I streamline efficiencies and I consolidate um, duties and employees to um, lower the costs. And then the, the other question is kind of changing subjects a little bit, but it's still on the, um, the professional services contracts that the town has. It, it troubles me that we go out to bid for those as infrequently as we do. Um, you know, no, I, I'm not disparaging any of the quality of the work, but it just strikes me as not being good business practice to go out and, and procure those periodically to see that you're getting the best service that you can, the best price that you can, and that the con consultants are staying on their toes and giving you their best efforts. And this is something you know, that I, I brought up last year, and I, you know, I haven't seen any evidence that any of these have been um, you know, procured again or procured in, in this year when you know, it's legal, it's auditing, other, and there's some other functions too. It's, again, n no disparagement on the, the people that we get the services from. Mm -hmm. They may mm -hmm. end up getting it, but they may have to sharpen their pencil to mm -hmm. keep the contract. And they at least know that they don't own that contract forever and can give you, you know, less than top-notch service. Mm -hmm. Duly noted. Well, we will see a number of budgets tonight where that that idea applies, Steve. So, mm -hmm. um, but we have the blanket statement for it now. Mm -hmm. So, yep. uh, anybody else on the central budget office before we move on alphabetically? General insurance. Okay, um, this is Anne Marie's charge. It is a million dollar budget. Um, it is Contractual budget, so that's why the um, there's only one line filled in on it. Right, and this is a PDF, so it's not uh, not showing up very well here. Um, okay, so. The main feature of this budget is that um, is that its purchasing power has traditionally been augmented by an encumbrance from the previous year. And that purchasing power is generally necessary. It's our, it's our self-insurance for a number of things that, that could happen um, for which we're not mm -hmm. specifically insured. And I think the easiest way to understand that is to look at um, 
some of the narrative here and realize, just going backwards, um, page up. There's another page sure, after yes. that, too. That's what I thought, too. Why is it not? Okay. Oh, here we are. Police and fire coverage. Look at the bottom line. There's a $45,000 aggregate deductible. School board liability, $15,000 per deductible per occurrence. Law enforcement liability, $15,000 deductible. Um, public officials and employee liability, each occurrence, $25,000 dedu deductible. If, I don't know when the last time we had one of those deductibles ever occurred, but if you had a rash of them, you'd go through that $250,000 pretty quickly. Uh, so, I, so I think essentially that's, that's the my understanding of the of the reason for that large encumbrance from year to year. And, and if I could just add to that, Ted, sure. it's also for lawsuits that are not covered by the town's insurance company. Okay, which might be a, another piece of the narrative here. Um, so what lawsuits would those be um, that we haven't looked at already? Well, some of them are confidential in, in, in nature, so I couldn't um, really divulge them at this time. They're still ongoing. Oh. Ted. So the actual settlement, not a, de not a deductible. Not a deductible, right. the actual settlement. Well, um, I guess we've got to hope for the best. That's right. So, anyways, that's, that's the... That's what you see on Schedule C, encumbered from the prior year. Steve, as as a five year average, is that two fifty enough to cover what we've been paying out over yes. the last five years? Yes. Is it too much? Um, no, no, so especially with a couple 250 of two fifty is where it's been. Yeah, yeah. There's a couple of um, outstanding suits right now that I could potentially need to um, seek more money for if they don't settle in the town's favor. So, so we we, we pretty much understand that. It's just probable necessity of carrying something like that in, for contingencies, but I guess I'm looking at at why you know tell me about why the basic policies should be going up fifty nine thousand dollars. I mean I know it's it's a small thing. And um, well, let me give you a brief overview. Sure. Uh, the, we are with um, in a consortium with uh, Mass Interlocal Insurance Association. We've um, been with them since 1994. We did go out um, to bid in 2006. Um, Maya did come in well below the other bidders that we did receive. Um, Maya has about, they service about 400 communities um, and um, entities within the state of Massachusetts. So they're a large pool. Um, the way that uh, the budget is predicated is they look at the past three year history and then they give you what your next year's projection will be. Um, sometimes if, the, if we have a good year, we'll get a dividend um, payment or a participation credit. When those do come in, um, they get turned over and they're sent to the general fund. Um, but the way this budget is predicated is on your last three years history with respect to general liability, workers' compensation. And this budget, general insurance budget, is a total town budget. And what I mean by that, it's not only just a town side, it also incorporates all the school's insurance um, requirements as well. So how, how are we doing on those rebate programs um, for workers' comp? over the last three years pretty well, right? Mm, the last three years we did, um, we did well. We have what's called a loss control credit program um, that I think I talk about every year when I come to how proud I am of it because it's, it's a real team effort by all uh, department heads to, to work on the program. And um, what it is is that you, you want to try to put policies and procedures in place that 
limit the amount of risk um, that you have in the town and you have to hit certain benchmarks um, and it, it's it's with calling in your workers comp um, claims in a timely fashion to having um, policies and procedures in place with respect to safe dig um, um, back prevention um, back injury prevention um, uh, water and sewer management um, all kinds of safety um, policies and procedures um, I don't have the amount of the last three years of what we've um, gotten back with that loss control credit program um, but it has been substantial and it's always a, a year behind so in other words I will be getting fiscal year 14 um, credit in fiscal year 15 Any, any other questions on general insurance? Okay. Um, so the, the actual $59,000 increase, Anne-Marie, mm -hmm. that actual increase, that is, that's, that's the projection by MIIA. That's correct, at, at this uh, period in time, yes. Okay, so that's not an estimate, that's their projection. That's their projection. Okay. Um, as we get closer um, to the warrant, the printing of the warrant, I always go back and ask them to take one more look at their numbers and see if there's any way they can reduce that increase. Um, so I, I do do that usually around March. And sometimes be, I'm able I'll to come interested. back with some good news and lower the in, uh, budget by a few dollars, and some years I'm, I'm not able to do it. Okay, great. Uh, we'll, we'll hope to hear from you on that score. Okay. Uh, the next budget, I'm not sure, is, is group insurance.